Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 301 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace, coming to you live from YouTube. And welcome back, everybody. Um, thank you very much to all of the people who've left messages so far. The first comment of the day went to, is it is it soon or soon? Saying finally some Persilace content, but Christine is saying hello from London as well. Tripsy is here, Dimitri, Mona, Maudlin, hello to all of you. Um, I feel like I need to get back into old routines because it's been a while since we've done this, and I and I'm I'm sure I'm sure I've forgotten to prepare something. I'm just waiting to find out what today's glitch is going to be. But for the benefit of those of you watching uh, the recording, um, this is the first video that uh, I'm doing after an extended summer break. So there has been no love at first sent. I think for about six weeks or so. But thank you very much to those of you who've been. Um, in touch over the last few weeks saying that you missed the content, that you hope I've been having a good break, but that you really want me to come back. I've really, really appreciated all of those messages. It's been very, very, very touching to, 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 to get them to read them. Very sweet of you to write and very, very kind of you to join me as we resume the next season, if we can call it that, of Love at First Scent. To very, very, very quickly put things in context for the people who may be watching the, my channel for the first time, um, I am a, a writer and perfume critic. I've had a blog called Persilase.com since 2010, and I still do uh, try to update the blog as much as possible. Actually, over the summer months, over the summer weeks, there have been a few reviews that I posted, but also for the last few years, I've been doing um, YouTube videos. Um, namely, mainly this series that we call Love at First Scent, the original idea of which was that I would experience perfumes for the first time live and give you initial impressions of them. We've kind of deviated from that over the years, and we still sometimes do traditional Love at First Scent episodes, don't we? Sometimes we do episodes that are on a single perfume, sometimes we do top tens, sometimes we do a series of perfumes, etc., etc. But basically the idea is for us to get together to smell things and to share our love of perfume. So if you are joining me for the very first time, you are very, very welcome. Please do consider subscribing to my channel and also click on the little bell icon so that you get notifications of new videos. I'm gonna miss a lot of these comments. I'm going to have to go back and make sure that I read some of the comments, but uh, hello to all of you. And we are starting in quite a special way because I would like to do something that we've only managed to do once so far on this channel. Having said that, it worked very well, fingers crossed, touch wood. So we're going to try it again because I'm going to try to bring in as many of you as possible. Some of you will remember that we did this a few months ago to talk about the subject of the day, which is the perfumes that we did actually work. This, this is going to annoy me. I need a haircut now. I need a post-holiday haircut. Anyway, ignore it. To talk about the perfumes that we actually wore over the summer months and weeks, as opposed to the ones that were recommended. I ended up doing two um, summer perfume recommendation videos for some reason. But today, I'm going to talk to you about a few of the scents that not only did I, did I actually take them on holiday with me, but I actually ended up wearing as well. So we've got the selection here, but I would like to hear from you if you would be interested in joining me as well about the one perfume that you particularly enjoyed wearing over the last few months, wherever you may happen to be in the world. Um, and if you would like to join the actual live broadcast, okay, so I'm not talking about just joining the chat, but I'm talking about you appearing on screen alongside me for the broadcast. If you scroll, um, or you may not even need to scroll because I've pinned the comment. So if you look at the pinned comment on this broadcast, you should find a link uh, to a StreamYard page. And if you click on that link, it will ask you to enter your name. It will ask you to check that your mic and your camera are working and you will be able to join me. Before you do that, please do read the terms and conditions in the video description below. They're not very long, but do take a moment to read them. Basically, the terms and conditions are all about you playing nice and not being rude or offensive. Not that you would be, but you know what I mean. We like to we like to keep things relatively um, family friendly and and certainly clean on this channel. So hopefully some of you will be able to join me. And finally, before we get to smelling, the plan for today is that we do this video, which is probably going to be in the region of about 50 minutes long or so, and then we will come back a few minutes after that with a review of something that I have been 
itching to smell for so long and I promise you I have restrained myself the first time I will be spraying it will be in the video with you and it is something very very exciting it is the return of something quite old and I won't say any more than that okay so what you have uh, here in, in front of you or next to me is um, the, the selection of, of pretty much all of the scents that I took away on holiday with me. And you may be wondering, oh my goodness, how did he manage to take all of those? Well, that is because um, this year, same as a lot of years actually, but this year we, we, we drove to our holiday destination. And the nice thing about driving to a holiday destination is that you can pretty much load up the car with as much stuff as you want. You don't have to worry about luggage allowance. Now, if I, if I had been flying somewhere, then rest assured, I would not have been able to take this much stuff. Um, uh, someone says, hi from Middle Earth. <laughs> okay. Um, and I tried not to overthink the selection. As you know, I'm very, very good at overthinking. And I, I just thought, okay, let's take a selection of some older things and some new things, some things that take my fancy. And then, of course, you get to where you are going to and you think, okay, which of these is, is, is actually going to work? Now, to put things in a bit of geographic context, our holiday this year was in, in the south of France. And many of you may be aware that the south of France was really, really hot. Hi from Paris, says Renaud. Oh, you're in, you've ended up in Paris at the moment, have you? Well, you're, you're very welcome. Oh, I wonder if you'll be wanting to join us to tell us which perfume. You, you're very welcome to, Renaud, if you'd like to, to carry on from episode 300. Anyway, um, I should say at this moment that actually Madame Persolet's very much enjoyed wearing Opus 5 this summer, but then she always enjoys wearing Opus 5, so I got to smell a lot of Opus 5, so thanks to, to Amouage for that one. Now, it was it was an exceptionally hot and humid summer across much of Europe. It was particularly humid in the south of France, and so that raised an issue as far as the ability, if you like, of some of these perfumes to to, to, to remain for any kind of decent length of time on skin, on fabric. I'm not going to use the, the, the performance word, but it's, it's kind of what I'm talking about. And so a lot of the super light ones um, faded very, very quickly. I was really looking forward to wearing the Haute Fraîcheur version of Cartier's uh, Declaration, which I reviewed uh, a little while ago on this channel, I believe. Um, composed by Mathilde Laurent, and, and I still really like smelling it, and I like the way that she has created a kind of minty, grassy top note to a something that starts resembling the, 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 the declaration, declaration heart that we recognise, but it, it really didn't withstand the heat and the humidity of, of, of the south of France. So I thought to myself, well, maybe that, that, well, that'll be something that you could enjoy more um, in autumn or in spring, where, where you can actually smell it on yourself a little bit more. Uh, Natasha saying, I only took Mitsuko with me, was 37 degrees in Italy. Yeah, that, that's, that's hot for, for a country that isn't set up for that kind of thing and doesn't have air conditioning everywhere. You know, I say this as somebody who grew up in the Middle East, but it's completely different in the Middle East because... You go from an air-conditioned car to an air-conditioned building to an air-conditioned house. But we won't get into that because, of course, some people would argue that air-conditioning is, is, is part of the problem that, that, that's causing the, the climate issues. Um, but interestingly, there were some lighter scents that continued to work extremely well. And I've got to give a, a shout-out. <laughs> Renaud, I don't know if you're still watching, but you've got a question here from Regis saying, will they be a Jubilation 53 man? I have no idea what the answer to this. We, we can't turn this into another Amouage interview, but maybe you can put it, put put Regis out of his his mystery, her mystery, Regis. I suppose that's I don't know. But anyway, I always have to take this with me on holiday because this has become a total summer uh, staple. You know how some people have soundtracks for various life events, where I always have a kind of smell track, and the summer cannot be the summer without uh, Jardin sur le Nil from Hermès, composed, of course, by Jean-Claude Elena, originally released in 2005. Um, and I kind of surprised myself as well when I when I got to our destination. I thought, oh, I've got three Hermès scents, which, you know, again, was not planned. But I think there is something about 
Hermès, that, that, that is quite summary, that is quite South France, without going for um, obvious citrus cliches. And certainly in the case of Eleanor Sense, he, he somehow managed to make things that were light and fresh and summary with, without, without uh, resorting to obvious um, citruses. So here we go. Let, let, let's have this one as the first one to smell. And then hopefully uh, some of you may want to join us. I've got one person already kind of in the waiting room, but uh, without naming names, I can't see you. So I won't be able to let you in unless I can see you because I need to make sure that whatever visuals you may be presenting us with would, will be appropriate. So I need to be able to see you before I can let you in, okay? Um, Mona says, Jardin sur le Nil is perfect for summer. Yes, okay, so for the benefit of maybe the like the three of you who've never smelled this perfume, let's um, smell it here. It, it's just so, so, so delightful. Um, by the way, if you would like a really detailed account of the creation of this perfume, check out a book by Chandler Burr called... Now, which one was it? It's either the perfect scent or the emperor of scent. I think it's the perfect scent, isn't it? Because it's the perfect scent. Whichever one of the two it is, the it it's the one that uh, parallels the story of the creation of uh, Jardin sur le Nil with the creation of Sarah Jessica Parker's Lovely, and and it's it's really really fascinating because it tells the story of how Jean Claude Elena decided he wanted to try to capture the very, very fleeting smell of a particular type of Egyptian mango. Um, and you do get that kind of tart, biting, vaguely citrusy, but also kind of fleshy, fruity smell that you would associate with mango here. But one thing that isn't said enough about um, this perfume is that it also uh, features a really, really beautiful incense note. In fact, I think I've mentioned it uh, when I've done lists of top 10 frankincense perfumes. And somehow it's it's that kind of mineralic quality and the slightly lemony quality of the incense tying in with the greeny, mangoey thing at the top that makes this some extremely unusual, um, quite romantic in a way, but also very, very convincingly summary. Um, and yeah, I, I've, I've got through several bottles of this and I and I can't ever be without a bottle. There, there always has to be a backup bottle of Jardin sur le Nil. It's interesting because I, I, think, I think I consider the most interesting from the Jardin series to be Jardin après la Mousson, also by um, Elena. But the one that I enjoy wearing the most is definitely this one. What are some people saying? Um, Dimitri, hang on, why is my mouse not working? Let's get this activated here. Dimitri saying, interesting fact, over the span of your holiday, I've completely fallen for Abbey Rouge and got myself both EDT and EDP, so thank you. Not at all, thank you very much for letting me know. Which one do you prefer? That's the big question, that is the big question. I personally, as you know, prefer the EDT, although I love the EDP as well. Benji is saying, Rose de Jamal. Now, Rose de Jamal was one that I w took as well, but I thought I can't clog this up to me. And I, and I didn't end up wearing it as much as I thought I would, but I have to again say that the Rose de Jamal from Les de Modable has just got the most gorgeous and very hard to describe dry down. That perfume is all about the dry down. The top is interesting too, because it's this kind of fresh, minty, overtly masculine rose but it's the dry down where that perfume really comes to life. So Benji, thanks very much for mentioning it. Uh, but anyway, I didn't finish reading your comment. Rose de Jamal worked well in the heat, purchased it after reappraising it after your review. Took a while for me to understand the scent, but worth it, yes. And I, and I had a similar kind of experience with it, didn't I? And I think maybe that's because we are slowly, we're, we're losing, I think, our ability to appreciate a good dry down. Um, which is why doing this kind of thing, taking some perfumes away and really living with them for several weeks is so important because you do get to spot different facets of them and see them in a different light. 
Boogie Daddy says, I love Towers, Incense Extreme in the heat. It has that almost effervescent quality to it that I find cooling. Completely agree. I didn't take it with me, but I love that one as well. Uh, Monsieur Lanvin's Vetiver has been getting usage from me in the summer, says DJ, but then DJ adds the original 1964 version. Interesting. Oh, and Dimitri is commenting now about the Abbey Rouge. The EDT for sure. Everything is spot on. Marvelously well balanced. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Speaking of things coming out unexpectedly in the heat, let's stick with Hermès <coughs> because I'm going to give yet another shout out to a perfume that still doesn't seem to be getting as much as appreciation as I, I think it needs. But what seems to be emerging more and more is that it, it, it's quite polarizing. I think it's more polarizing than anybody expected. And it's Hermès uh, Age 24, H24, uh, composed by Christine Nagel, only released last year. <coughs> But I understand that there is now already an EDP of it. The, the original was an EDT. Uh, so now we, uh, there is this EDP, which I have yet to uh, encounter, but presumably it, it will be available in the UK soon. Um, and what can I say? I still really like it. Again, it's a different way of doing a summer scent because it's got a sort of orchard fruit opening, something almost cheaply, but the right side of cheap, um, apple pear-like, uh, strong, strong echoes of Christian Dior's Higher from many years ago, if anybody remembers that perfume, um, and then quite a strong note of this material called Sclaren or Sclarine, which is somewhere between silver and you know like biting on cold metal and the the, the more metallic elements of clary sage um and it's of that note weirdly uh, for me unexpectedly it's that note it's that sclary note that really seemed to come out very very strongly in 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 the heat uh, and i personally really enjoyed it there's something of cold steam if you can imagine that you know doing pressing your clothes doing your ironing with a really really hot iron and yet somehow also imagining all of that taking place in you know in, in down in the depths of some kind of ice bar um and i like the the chilled subterranean fruitiness of it um i i'm a fan i'm a fan a, a lot of people i think find it too synthetic too garish, too cold, um, which is which is fine. You know, we, we you can't please everybody, and we're not all go, all going to enjoy wearing the same things. Um, but I am pleased that we have an EDP now because I guess that means that the EDT was successful enough for the brand to invest in an EDP, and I I can't wait to smell it. I wonder if it's just going to be a more concentrated version which I think I would smell with a, a little bit of trepidation because as far as I'm concerned, the, the EDT is, 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 is very well balanced and, and to make it more concentrated, I, I don't know whether that would kind of make things go a little bit skew if, I, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll hopefully find out soon. Andy says, I brought Olympic Orchids Salamanca with me for my travels this summer. The clay note fits perfectly with exploring older architecture. That's a nice way of, um, choosing a perfume to tie in with what you're going to do on a holiday. I don't know that one. Um, Ashfaq says, considering our weather, I'm mostly wearing green perfumes and single oils. Uh, Mr. Raspopital says, Marc-Antoine uh, Barrois Ganymede has been amazing in the heat. A lot of love uh, for that perfume amongst you. I, if I've tried it, I've forgotten, but I, I, I don't think I've I have. And Mr. Raspopital says that the EDP of Hermes H24 is quite good, actually, and worth a sniff, which is good to know. What else are people saying? Uh, Jeffin says, really enjoy H24. Wondering how your thoughts have developed as to Terre au Givre since its release. Is this just going to be an Hermes video? OK, well, I should say very, very quickly then. Go back and watch the video review that I did of Terre d'Arnes au Givre. I didn't wear it as much as I thought I would. I kept going for some of these other ones. I think this was one that actually needed the, the, the climate to be a tiny little bit cooler. But I do like the opening and I like how Christine Nagel here has somehow taken that familiar grapefruit opening and made it some very, very weirdly married it with both lava and again, a sense of iciness. I think it's a fragrance that uh, that we will need to go back to, and and Nagel is is 
is doing some strikingly odd things and yet presenting them in a surprisingly accessible way. That is quite a quite a feat to pull off. Now, I notice nobody wants to take the plunge and join the video, which is fine. Obviously, there is no pressure. But if you would like to, you should be able to find the link in the uh, at the in, in the pinned chat at the top of the 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 chat stream. What else are people saying? Uh, a lot of doson this summer, says Anna. A rediscovery from Deep Tea. Perhaps we'll talk about the Deep Tea then. Uh, Phil says, welcome back. I like Edge24 a lot, but have mainly been wearing Declaration EDT. Tried the EDP, but didn't like it. Interesting. Uh, and Kelly says, speaking of clay, I have been loving Jasmine Sarais Fayoum. Ah, thank you. Good shout out for Dana there, Dana Al Masri, the founder and perfumer at uh, Jasmine Sarai. Prickly Peach says, Zina Zina by Tom Ford all day long. Excellent. And Dimitri says, I'm looking forward to, to what you have to say. Oh, hang on, I've lost it. About Ombre Leather Parfum, the airy opening is so misleading. We should talk about that one as well. Uh, and Fata Morgana 16 says, I was in Jamaica and Chanel Cristal Overt was perfect in the heat. I can imagine that actually. That would have been, that would have been really, really great. Okay, let's smell, let's smell this diptyque because somebody mentioned diptyque very, very quickly because it, it hasn't been that long since um, we reviewed this one. This is a Harrods exclusive, or I should hold it that way, called Opsis. Opsis, the Greek word meaning spectacle, and it's meant to be inspired by the London theatre scene. I enjoyed wearing this one. Um, and this one was a kind of, we, we don't do, Comp we don't uh, talk too much about compliments here, but this one was a very sort of quiet and subtle compliment uh, attractor, compliment grabber, with um, several people actually sort of saying, oh, what is that? That's a, that's a very, very interesting perfume. Um, I, I really hope that after its period of exclusivity that this scent gets a wider audience because it really deserves it. It's not, it's not a shouter. It's not a... It's it's not a great big powerhouse, you know, it's not a loud sillage monster, sillage monster, but there is something really, really subtly attractive about it. Essentially, it's it's an iris, um, but it's got a really attractive pepper note at the top, and I don't think peppery irises are something that we get a lot of, and it's got that kind of rice powder, makeup feel, lots and lots of musks in the base, composed by Fabrice Pellegrin. Um, and I think it's it's the subtlety of it that I really appreciated. And again, this one, surprisingly effective in hot weather, especially when worn on fabric. Um, I have no idea how people who can't get access to Harrods are going to be able to smell it, but perhaps after a year, it might be available uh, if, in, in in wider distribution. I don't know. Does Opsis remind you of Gayak 10 from Lalabo, says Chang. I'd have to revisit that one. Off the top of my head, I genuinely can't remember. Um, yeah, and there's a sweetness to it as well, you know, maybe something that's slightly apple-like, almost maybe lychee, strawberry-like. It's, it's much more abstract and mysterious and opaque than an initial spray suggests. And I suppose that makes it interesting because, because if it is meant to be about spectacle in the theatre scene, then it's kind of conjuring up all sorts of questions and images about whether you're seeing reality and, and how transparent things are and are you be able to see through and are you seeing behind the scenes and how much is transparent, how much is opaque. You could really kind of go on a, on a little bit of a conceptual geek out with it. But I was very taken with it. So which other ones did I promise I would talk about? Let's let's sidetrack as well to mention a candle. Now, I always take some candles with me too, usually a couple. Uh, there's one that I always like to take a mimosa candle if we're going to the south of France, because even though the summer is not mimosa season, mimosas are very much associated with the south of France. And I did burn the mimosa candle a little, little bit, but this was this was the star candle. Gosh, this is from Ostens, okay? So this is their new candle range, which they call uh, Illumination. Illumination or Illuminations, which is a brilliant name for a candle range. You know, it's one of those ones where you think, oh my goodness, how come nobody's thought of that before? This is the jasmine. 
It's the only one of their candle range that I have smelt so far, but on the strength of this, I want to smell all of the rest of them. I don't know how many there are, although I do know that there is a, a rose. This is one of those candles that um, you don't even actually need to burn in order to smell it. You could just sort of leave it in one corner of the room and it would perfume the room very, very strongly um, and very quickly. But the jasmine, oh, I mean, th this went straight up to the top of, uh, I was going to say my favourite jasmine candles, but no, actually my favourite candles full stop. Um, a beautiful presentation, either, by the way, we should also say a beautiful glass container. Not again that that matters so much. It's burnt extremely well so far. It's burnt. It's been burnt several times and it's burnt evenly. I always do trim the wick, don't worry, but you can see that there's no kind of... Um, uh, unevenness in the in the in the surface of the wax and it is just so richly deliciously meaty and indolic and it's got that requisite green banana note thing happening at the top and a suggestion of tobacco and a suggestion of rosiness and a suggestion of ylang ylang and tuberose and really excellent projection you know whoever designed the fragrance um knew what to put in there to make it pump out and push out it's and as i'm smelling it now as well just completely picturing um indian garlands you know like jasmine garlands it is so photo real it's almost ridiculous um really beautiful stunning 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 work uh from ostens uh huge congratulations to them for this candle um and as I say, I, I, I want to seek out the others because uh, I would love to know what they've done with with a rose. You know, if, if the jasmine is as good as this, then we need to smell the rose. Another thing that I should mention, and this is kind of, I suppose, a, a preview of coming attractions. Um, I'm not going to talk about this at great length in this video because this really, really needs to have a video of its own. But I hit a little bit of a mother load when I went into an old, old, old perfumery in Italy. Oh my goodness, I could have spent so much money in that place. And obviously there is a limit to one's pockets and there were, I just kind of had to give myself a little, little bit of a budget and think, okay, I need to leave now. Because this is a perfumery that according to the person I was speaking to there has been in operation since the 1920s and they have got a lot of old stock. It was really, really difficult to restrain myself. And I have brought a couple of things to, to show you, but as I say, I'm not going to unseal them fully yet. Now this I pounced on. Uh, I think you can guess the brand, right? But check this out. Um, I, I uh, need to date this bottle properly. So this is, this is a number five extrait, okay? This is how it's presented here. This is a kind of uh, dabber, but and I can show you what I mean here. So if I unscrew this, you can see that it's just got like a sort of dropper thing. And there is there is number five extra in this. Um, I haven't unsealed this, the, the actual extra flacon, this one, the, the wax is still intact. Uh, I thought I might do that with you in a video. But apparently, the fact that it says Paris rather than Parfum, apparently the fact that if you look, I wonder if I can show you that. Can you see that on the wax seal? How close can I get? No, it's zooming in on me. Is it focusing on me? You may be able to see that on the wax seal, the logo is just the letter C rather than the double C logo. And the thinness of the cap and the proportions of the cap in relation to the rest of the bottle apparently places this somewhere in the 50s, the 1950s. Apparently. Somebody will probably tell me I'm wrong. Uh, and I think I think also the 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 way the logo, the 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 the, 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 the um, proportion of the logo here is is um suggests that it's 50s. Um so I was really, really delighted to get this. Um, I have smelt what's in here and it's 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 just heavenly, just so beautiful. So we are going to do 
we will have to do a separate video on some of the things that I found in this shop. But I also wanted to share something else because this was super exciting. Okay, and I've even kept the plastic wrapping to show you that it was in its plastic wrapping, okay? So this is, um, I, I, di I didn't even know what this was going to be because it doesn't say on the outside whether it's an EDP or an X-Tray. I, I think I have worked out now that it's an X-Tray. So you can see that it's YSL Paris Collection Diamant, whatever whatever that is. But the thing that um, immediately made me home in on it, where can I show you, was, uh, oh, where's it gone? Oh, perhaps it was on the wrapper. No, 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 hang on, Persolase, are you going blind? Oh, there you yeah. go, I am going blind. Because look, contains alcohol and fragrance. And then when you open it, um, you get a you get a guarantee. <laughs> um, and okay, check this out. Check this out. And then you open that, and you get a beautiful bottle of Paris with the diamond cap. I guess that's why it's the Collection Diamant. Now I have smelt this one, and. The top notes, uh, it, it says, by the way, here that it's um, 25 mils, but even on the bottle, it doesn't say what it's 25 mils of. I think, I think it's it's EDP, but maybe somebody will correct me and tell me I'm wrong. Maybe it's extra. Um, the top notes have gone off just ever so slightly. But once you get past that bit, you're back in heavenly, heavenly, heavenly Paris land. So this was, this was... This was very special. And I did well with some other stuff as well because I got I got another YSL that I'd never even heard of. So we will we will we will save that for another video. But I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm definitely very seriously considering undoing the wax seal of the Chanel number no. five in a video with you. Now, maybe you're just enjoying listening to me rabbiting on and on, but nobody is wanting to join the live stream, which worries me a little bit because either Either, either you're all looking a mess and you don't want to, or, or, or whatever, it's up to you. There, there is no pressure, right? Now, we, I should mention, I should mention at least two more. Uh, one is this one, which turned out to be a very, very pleasant surprise. Um, well, I shouldn't say that it was a surprise because, I mean, I took it with me because I wanted to wear it. It's the Parfum version of Tom Ford Ombre Leather. Um, but I guess maybe what was pleasantly surprising about it was was how how beautifully it bloomed in the heat. Now this is, oh, you're saying I look a mess, yes. <laughs> I'll bet. Um, this is uh, very much a, a kind of variation on the Tom Ford Tuscan leather type construction, you know, the sort of tangy leather, great big um, beast. Um, I am a mess and I'm unashamed to admit it, but please keep asking in the future, says Katsy. I will. We will do some more of these videos. Maybe, maybe give people a little bit more notice. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have to tell myself to not take it personally that nobody nobody wants to join my little video party. Never mind. Do we need to be dressed, says Pradeep? Yes, that would that would help. That would that would be helpful, Pradeep. Thank you, please. <laughs> a mess and brushing my teeth, says Nubianet. No one needs to see that. Still morning in California. Okay, fine. You don't need to justify yourselves. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Um yeah, and the Parfum version, I think, is the best version we've had of Ombre Leather so far. Because, why? Why do I say it's the best version? I think maybe it's because it's the smoothest. It's the one that balances the kind of harsher, more hairy-chested elements at the top with, with, with the creamier, more velvety, more vanilla-like substances in the base. It's more seamless. It's more suave, I think. Um, oh, Schwag says, I look like I just got released from Arkham City. Do you mean Arkham City? Well, then we definitely need to see. Okay, we will draw a line under this. You don't have to join the video. I will not be offended much. Um, love the scent of Tuscan leather EDP, says Prashant, but the performance is absolutely horrible on my skin. It didn't encourage me enough to try the Parfum. Interesting. But this is ombre leather, right? Not Tuscan leather. Um, and... It was one of the few scents in these extremely hot, hot, during those extremely hot days, one of the few scents that I was actually able to smell on myself. Because when I wear, you know how some people sort of say that 
you shouldn't be able to smell a perfume on yourself. That if you are able to smell your perfume on yourself, then that means there's something wrong with it, which I've always thought is a load of rubbish. You know, if, if I'm wearing a perfume, I want to be able to smell it. I want to be able to enjoy it. Um, and this was one of the few that actually really managed to do that in a big way this summer. Um, and it's really, really, really sensuous, just the right side of aggressive, um, and and very, 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 very sunbaked, very, very heated. Um, I'm struggling with sketchy internet, says Tripti, so I'm not going to hop on, but I hope others do. Never mind. Okay, we have got one person here, so maybe we'll be able to be joined by one person, Marie, whose internet at the moment looks interesting but let's 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 bring you into the picture mary and then you can tell us let's see if this works let's see if this works hello hello hi i think how we can you? hear you oh good i'm great. very well thank you how are you i'm good as well are you able to share where it is that you are watching from yes absolutely i'm located in uh, well around montreal canada Fantastic. It looks like it's very sunny where you are. It's very, very nice. I feel like this is probably going to be the last really nice day oh. we have. But thank you very much for being brave and breaking the ice. <laughs> so, so what have you what have you enjoyed wearing this summer? Okay, I amongst, you know, many different things because I just I really don't stick to one. At least I haven't been able to find anything that I'm willing to stick to forever. Um, I have been wearing Ghost in the Shell from uh, Etalib d'Orange. Yeah. Um, and I just, I was so absolutely taken with it. Um, and I, honestly, I, I, I smelled it after watching uh, your your review of it. And uh, I I don't know if anyone else, I mean, I watched, I listened to a lot of, or read a lot of, uh, of reviews on it. And I feel like nobody talks as much as I would about um about the black tonic milkiness of it and and that to me that's just like I, I think that's such an amazing note and especially the way it's done in in uh, in ghost in the shell i think it's just so so beautiful i'm i'm really pleased that you gave a shout out to etalib d'orange because i think that that they they make these sense more most recently anyway that don't always necessarily grab attention very very quickly and i think they need a little bit more time i mean maybe even i was a bit dismissive of ghost in the shell or i didn't i didn't get it but yes you're absolutely right it's it, it, right it does have that strange creamy milky quality which i would imagine would come out well in the heat mm -hmm. yeah it's i think that for some people it might be counterintuitive to wear a, a lactonic or heavy lactonic uh fragrance in the heat Eat, but there was something I don't I really don't know and I didn't think that I would like it but it's you know at first it kind of feels a bit more mature and then I feel like the way it dries down actually felt really it's it, it may it may be silly to, to describe it this way but really kind of innocent and and young at the same time and it's a bizarre bizarre kind of dichotomy which well, I mean that's a brilliant description it ties in very very well with with the idea of it Thank you so much, Marie. Thanks very much, because I think you have broken the ice because we have got somebody <laughs> else. We have got somebody else in the waiting room as well. Thank you very much for taking the time to do that. And I hope it's not going to be your last um, Sunday in, in <laughs> Thanks Canada. Thanks very much. Thank you. And so now we can go over to Mr. Raspopitol. Now, how nice to be able to see you. So where are you watching from? I am watching from Kitchener, Ontario in Canada. Interesting. So we have second Canada Canadian today. Twice. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> and speaking of looking a mess, I I thought I was gonna break the ice. I'm uh, currently working on uh, putting Hang some on. Uh, some. Sure, okay. uh, Just to show me again, I can't quite see it because I turned up this. So what okay. is he showing us? We're putting up some stone in the basement here, and uh, <laughs> I'm as. Uh, Messy looking as uh, anyone can be. I, I think, so I think that considering, helps, helps to, to break the ice for the rest. Thank you. But considering considering what you're doing, I think actually you look amazing. So what have you what have you enjoyed wearing over the last few weeks? Um so as I mentioned, uh Ganymede for me the last so I've I've gotten it earlier this year. 
and basically it's been a revelation for me it's been super I, I literally I could wear that any I can I can see myself wearing it any time of the year for any occasion you, think you, could, you, you could describe it just like you know in a couple of lines so it's it's kind of an odd it's an odd uh, scent it's it's pretty I would say it's very unique it's it's mineralic it's supposed to I guess it, it's it's uh, it's supposed to mimic what the perfumer uh, figured Ganymede would uh, which is I think it's it's a moon of Jupiter is it that I, I think it is a moon whether it's a moon of Jupiter I'm not sure but yeah somebody will let us know in a sec right so it's it's got this like mineralic uh, with vetiver uh, there's a leather aspect to it as well and it's it's just such a such a versatile uplifting uh, bright scent honestly I, I can't recommend it enough uh, and also for evening or for maybe a little more, uh, um, I don't know, I guess a little more dressed up occasions, uh, okay. B683 uh, from the same uh, Marc Antoine Barrois. Okay. Um, and I think it's Quentin Biche that's the, the exclusive perfumer for the whole, uh, for, the, for the label. Oh, is he? I, knew, I knew that he'd made Ganymede, but so. I didn't realize he was exclusive. Interesting. Yeah, so okay. I, I think there's only. B six A three was the first one, and that's like a leather predominant scent. Um, then Ganymede came out, B six A three extrait, and then uh, and then the new one is Ancelad, which is really good wow. as well. And yeah. I, and I, honestly, I'm not affiliated with the brand. It may sound like I am. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's <laughs> but, fine. That's uh, fine. I, I really enjoy their whole line, and I strongly encourage. Any... I, I should I should say that you've got at least one admirer here. So Natasha is saying a man that can do DIY is a wonderful thing. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. My and good pleasure. Luck with the rest of that work. And, and I welcome back. Yeah. Knowledge. Happy to have you back. No, yeah, it's, it's great to be back and, and nice to see some of you. And uh, one more nudge for me to try Ganymede. And we've got one more person here as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. So we will go to. We will go to, let me not mess this up. We will go to Druba, who is, hi. Can hi there. Hear you? It's been a, yes, yeah. we can. Awesome, awesome. It's been so a let me just, I, I, for some reason, I need to turn everybody up a bit, but just give me a sec to do that. Right. And where are you watching from? Uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, in the US. Okay. So we're still, we're still in that side of the world, but so, you're yeah, very, very happy. welcome. Thank you for thank you for um for being brave and taking the plunge and doing this and for moving things down south a little bit. Now, <laughs> what what have you what have you enjoyed wearing? So I a few years back I was in uh, Capri and so I was smelling some stuff from uh, Paris Monte Carlo. Uh, so this one Arancia di Cecilia. Ah. Um, I have um, the Arancia by Aqua de Parma and that one is good. It is a little bit more orangey, but this is has almost like a gummy nature to the, uh, almost like if you had a preserved uh, mandarin skin or orange yeah. skin. Uh, and so it it balances kind of the citrus aspects with that uh, and makes it last a little bit longer than a few of the other uh, kind of orange mandarin scents that I have. So I've really been... Um, I'm just thinking. I was. I'm just thinking. Uh, when when we when I first did one of these audience participation videos, I thought I really need to do them more often. And now I'm thinking that again because you will bring so many interesting things to the table. And the way you describe these perfumes, I just think I just need to just just hand over to all of you and let you <laughs> run. But thank you for mentioning that brand as well because again, another brand that doesn't get enough attention. Some of their scents are so beautifully composed, aren't they? And so qualitative. I have I have their Cedro di Dimante. I have their um... Uh, another one of their uh, ones. The Chetro, I think, is really good because also okay. on the Ooh, coast, we've it definitely reminds me kind of those big, uh, those big lines that you'd find down there th that are as big as your head, and they really do a good job of kind of meshing in between kind of the the tree that they're from with again this the sparkly bits of the, uh, the citrus. Totally, totally. I mean, I love I love their jasmine and their rose. Yeah, somebody else here, Scent Genie, is mentioning their jasmine de pays. I mean, really, really stunning. So thank you very much for, for mentioning that one. And thank you very much 
for for uh, for for joining us and 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 have a good have a good September have a good autumn. Thanks a lot, Drew. Thank you. There we go. At, at least three people. At least three people came along. And right. And I was. I promised that I would mention this one as well. And then I think we would finish because this one was another hit for me this summer from Acro. Let me please make sure that I brought the correct one. Actually, best thing is to just smell it. Yeah, and actually just read the label. This is ink from Acro. Uh, and it was particularly poignant because I also had the chance to, as some of you may have seen from my Instagram, I had the chance to meet up with Olivier Cresp, who of course is the perfumer behind this entire range. And this was, this was another one of those huge leathery vetiver scents that worked extremely well in the heat. Um, and there was a little funny story behind this one because there was a, uh, a, a complete stranger, complete stranger, actually, uh, when I was wearing this, said, you know, what are you wearing? That's an amazing scent that you're wearing. And I told him what it was. And pretty much there and then he just went on his phone and ordered a bottle because he was so taken with it. But it but it turned out that he's he was quite a kind of knowledgeable perfume geek himself. And he knew all about his favorite ouds and his favorite, you know, monster scents that he that he enjoys wearing. So, again, for the benefit of those of you who may not know ink, it's it's a really great evocation. It's supposed to be an evocation of tattoo ink, but I personally don't know anything about tattoo ink. I do know a lot about the ink that goes into pens, like fountain pens, and it really captures that black metallic quality of of um, writing ink, of pen ink. And the way Cresp has done that here, I think, is to take a whole load of clever aroma chemicals, but linked them to a, a subtle, subtle, subtle jasmine note, and then as the scent progresses, you get a more obvious, a more overt vetiver. But having said that, the metallic quality remains intact all the way through, um, which I think is what makes this one really special. So uh, you'll see a couple of other things here, I think. The, the, this uh, this diptyque body spray um, I enjoyed wearing. I, I, I actually thought I sprayed it a lot. We've pretty much covered all of them then. So Thank you very much for watching. We are back. Thank you to those of you who took the plunge and joined me. I promise we will we will have to do more of these audience participation things because you are you are very 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 good at them. Those of you who do join us, give me a few minutes to clear these guys away for the benefit of those of you watching live, and we will be back with the Dior trilogy, the re-released trilogy of Au Noir, uh, Coloring Blanche, and Point d'Argent. So see you in a few minutes, but thank you for watching this one. Bye now.